Alpaca Direct, and I'm here to show you today some techniques with your drop spindle. I'm showing off a beautiful drop spindle today from Cascade. It's called Tiger Mountain, and it's made of zebra wood. Um, they name all their spindles after the mountains in the Seattle Issaquah area. Well, I'm going to show you basically how to get started, and this to me was the simplest way that I learned how to get my what's called leader cord going. And all I do is I take my just scrap piece of yarn that's lying around and as you can see I'm just going to wrap it around a couple of times around the shaft of the spindle like this, kind of interlock the end and then I'm going to slide it up to the top of the cop right there. Then there's a little notch. I'm going to go inside this notch and around the hook. Now I'm basically ready to spin. Don't worry while you're spinning that you unspin this yarn. It doesn't really matter because as you see, as I'm twisting, it's going to literally take out what's called the ply, which are the two yarns put together. So I'm going to go ahead and go from hip or from knee to hip again and notice how I'm getting all that lovely twist up into my new leader cord. Then, oh, before it runs out, I am going to lay my roving right on top, right underneath. And as you see, this is going to start twisting itself around the roving. Now I'm going to draft, which means I'm pulling down, and I'm always keeping my little triangle open. That's this little area in here. And the twist is going to be traveling up my fiber. This is the Colonial Corindale and I'm going to keep twisting up. Notice my hands. And however much fiber I let in is the grist or the thickness of the fiber. I'm now going to come and wind up the cob. See how I'm winding towards myself. And I always try and wind right under near, underneath here because then that's a nicely weighted in the center. If you wind up and down the shaft you won't have that nice balance. Back into the hook again, and I'm gonna go once again from my knee to my hip, allowing that spin to travel up, traveling up. Open the sheep gate, let the spin travel up, and that's what's hooking those fibers together. Now it's called a drop spindle for a reason, because many times you will lose control, especially when you're first starting, and it's going to drop to the floor. That's when you lose, you don't have enough fiber in there, and you lose your strand. The goal of a good spinner is to keep a consistent grist. Once again, grist is the diameter of your yarn that you're working with. So I try and let my fingers judge the thickness. Don't want to get too thin, I just pull a little more. So the amount you pull down will determine the thickness. And also sometimes fiber has uh, um, somewhat of a play in that. Michelangelo said that within every chunk of marble there is a sculpture. I say within every fleece there is a project, there's a sweater, and it also, I believe, the fleece ten, tells you, in a way, how thick or thin your fibers will be. Once again, and notice how I'm just kind of covering over my leader cord. I'm going to go ahead and put this back, and I'm going to rest it. So I'm going to put my, my work down when I do that. I twist back again so it won't come undone, and I don't lose all this twist in here. Put it back in and wrap it back and I set it in my knitting bag and I'm ready to go.